I'm back at Fleet's Dam. I haven't fished a match here for about two years. It's the 2nd of September. I really wanted to get here through the um, earlier part of the summer, to be honest, just for some shallow fishing while the carp was still active. However, I just haven't had a chance to get here. So it has gone a little bit cooler over the last day or two, but we know we're gonna need carp to win. I think there was a match here last week. There was one with a high 70 pound. So I think the target or um, the number of fish that you normally need is about the same as normal, which I think is going to be around 10 fish, 10 carp, I think. That's usually what you kind of need to stand a chance of winning. So I'm going to be fishing the method. Um, I've got a bomb rod set up as well, and I've got the pellet waggler. I'm hoping to catch on the pellet waggler. But like I've just said, it's gone a little bit cooler, so I'm not quite sure how good that'll be. Draw-wise, I don't know why, but for some reason, I want to be on the right-hand bank. I've always done better on the right-hand bank than the left-hand bank or even right at the bottom on the damn head, but obviously the draw's out of my hands. So I'm gonna go and get drawn, and hopefully a drawn area where there's gonna be a few fish. Well, I've drawn down that right hand bank. I didn't really wanna be there, it's just a confidence thing. Drawn peg 21. I've been told that the wind has actually been blowing down into this end for the last week or two, so for some reason, this end has been better. There isn't any wind on it at the moment. It's flat calm, which will obviously suit a waggler approach i just need a few carp to be there so i'm down this left hand bank i'm gonna get parked up get the kit out and i'll talk you through the approach and everything and just let you have a look what the peg's like when i get down there I'll go mr. Right. mr chandler's here <laughs> morning tony morning and <laughs> once up. again nikki french has done the business So the first look at the peg, it's flat and calm, like I said, there's no wind. There we go, 21, got some nice steps down to the peg, which is good. Can't see any fish cruising about, but that's uh, not always the case on here anyway, even when the fish are shallow. So I'm gonna get some, uh, get some kit set up and I'll talk you through the approach and the baits and everything. And there is Mr. Oh. Mr. Wild, in every sense of the world. <laughs> Well, two pegs to my left is the next angler, and that is Jamie Wild. I haven't seen him for years, so it's been a bit like a, a reunion. There's a few fish moving out there. I can't say they're, they're not obviously caught, they're small silverfish, but I've got three rods set up. Shouldn't take me long to get set up. I would have preferred to be on that other bank, I'll be absolutely honest with you, but there is lots and lots of room here, so... We're going to be fishing 10 until 4, so it's a six-hour match, and obviously anything can happen in that sort of time frame. And I managed to get the van behind me as well, which uh, means it's much better for dads sitting and watching. One thing I love about these matches is how quick you can actually be set up. Um, I've got three rods set up, they're already set up at home. But it's not one of those sorts of venues where I'm looking for features, you know. I'm not trying to decide what range I'm going to fish. I've got a very clear idea about how I'm going to fish today. Um, so bait-wise, I'm going to keep it really, really simple. Just get onto the platform. There's the platform, as you can see. It's a little bit tighter here, so I've just kind of improvised a little bit with, uh, with, with the roost. But basically, it's going to be about pellets. That's the main thing. So in here, I've actually got, as you can see, eight pints of feed pellets there we go so these are the eight mil feed pellets that i use as you can see very very uniform in size which is great obviously when you're catapulting i always put them into these tubs when i've got spare or when i've got park bags and i always put the bag into the top just so i know exactly what they are so there's eight pints there obviously as you'd expect i'm going to be loose feeding those via catapult out there to about 25 meters that sort of range as you can see the wind isn't going to be an issue or it isn't an issue at the moment so I'm going to be loose feeding those 8 mil pellets there. <laughs> there's plenty of banter today. There's actually, uh, today is actually the day of the Maver match this final as well. So there's plenty to talk about that as well. Just talking about where people have drawn and that sort of thing. So that's the main line of approach. I'm going to be loose feeding pellets at 25 meters, that sort of range. Obviously on that line, I can put a method feeder over it. I can put a bomb over it. I have got a bomb set up. I'll show you these setups when, uh, when I get on the box. But obviously I can put a pellet waggler on there as well. And I am hoping to catch on the pellet waggler. You know, that's one of the main reasons why I'm here. I do love fishing that method. And that's why I'm here now before it goes, goes too cold for the pellet waggler. So hopefully there's gonna be some action on that for you. And then I've got some micros as well. I've just soaked some micros up. 
and they're what I'm obviously going to be using on the method feeder which is the method I'm going to start on like I say I'm expecting around 10 fish to be the target to give myself a chance of winning it so I've just dried my nets out they're they're drying out now which is obviously good practice um, for when you're visiting different different fisheries so that's it really all set up so I'm gonna have a cup of coffee have a sandwich with dad Well, it's literally just five minutes before the start. Everything's set up. Um, it's gonna be a super, super simple approach. I can pretty much see loads and loads of anglers, so I'll have an idea about how my approach is going. The average stamp in here, I think, is around probably six or seven pound, but you could easily catch fish well into, into double figures. So um, it's just gonna be a case of starting on that method feeder, just being nice and patient, seeing what's happening around me and building up that, that loose fed pellet line. And that's what it is, you know, and, and hopefully that's gonna draw some fish in and then it's up to me to find out whether, you know, those fish, you know, whether I can catch them on a bomb, on a method feeder, or ultimately what I'd really like to do is catch on a on the uh, on the pellet waggler, but that obviously depends on the conditions and uh, how high they are up in the water. So I'm looking forward to it. We're all ready to go and it's six hours. So I've kind of portioned my bait out. Some people ask me about um, measuring bait and stuff out. I've got eight pints of pellets here, but I've actually split them into half. So I've got two lots of four, four pints, so that I know I can gauge how much I'm actually using, you know, to, um, to try and make sure that I'm not gonna run out if it does turn into be a bit of a red letter day, but I don't think we're gonna need to feed quite as much as that. I'm kicking off on the method feeder, kit-wise, commercial 11 foot feeder, fantastic all-round rod, especially obviously for commercials. I've got that couple with the HX Pro 3000 reel. I've got six, no it's not, it's eight pound this one. Eight pound Horizon mainline, no shot leaders or anything like that. And I'm gonna kick off with just an eight mil bandum, uh, which is yellow. Okay, so I'm kicking off with that four inch up length. I've got an open, and we'll start on the open method style, just because of this sort of range. I do prefer that style just to kick off obviously i can step that up with this system i can step it up if i feel they want more food or more noise 20 gram into size that's what i'm kicking off with and i'm going to start with that out there towards that aerator simple as that really nice simple setup and obviously i could fish with this anywhere in the swim i can fish with it right out there towards the middle or i can obviously drop it anywhere else in the swim but ultimately i can drop it on that where that loose fed pellet line as well and this will easily land fish well into double figures so I'm kicking off with just that nice little mouthful for a carp. I'm not going to clip up, I'm going to fish unclipped, so I've got the drag undone as well. Small fish there, silver fish. So I'm going to fish unclipped. That's it. Good luck, lads. off on that line and start on five minute casts that's it just keep firing some pellets out there morning love morning Al right. how you doing you all right uh, gaffer's there gaffer's gaffer's got all buns on dashboard <laughs> I know he's got he's got four all Alan Anson's just turned up he's obviously having a chat with dad he spotted all those uh, four Four um, cupcakes. I've got one in my pocket, one in my car. <laughs> I get them from all over. They're like grenades, I know Jamie next to me, he's already told me he's going to fish a waggler and a bomb. That's all he's going to fish today. He's always feeding pellets the same as me, and he's started on the waggler as well. And that banging line is just struck. I don't know if he's had a bite first cast. So I can obviously see everything that he's doing now. I can't actually see him. He's waggling, he's banging line with um, where I'm looking and watching the tip, which is going to be ideal for keeping track of what he's caught. But hopefully, I'm not sat watching him all day. He's feeding a lot more than I expect to feed as well, which is interesting. And he's a little bit further out as well, so I don't know if he's feeding a bigger pellet than I am. 
the thing with feeding this bomb line is that you know if you're feeding it for a pellet waggler you're normally feeding it sparingly you know you're only feeding three or four at a time whereas if you wanted to catch on the bottom with it you tend to feed a little bit heavier and maybe less frequently I don't know what the fish are going to want today so I'm going to feed less but more frequent if that makes sense just to get a feel for for how it's fishing and obviously I can see everything that Jamie's doing as well just had an indication there I don't know if that was a, must have been a liner I think but that was a definite indication one thing I'm doing is feeding those pellets banging line with uh, banging line with the method feeder line so in other words my line is actually going right the way through my line is actually going through the area where I'm loose feeding pellets which can often highlight line bites if fish have arrived on the pellet line using one of the strongest catapults today just because I'm basically firing them as far as I can this is really tough and durable so also you could be feeding hundreds of times when you're fishing like this it's also not a venue where when I have fished here before when I have fished matches here through the summer as well more often than not you can't actually see the fish when they are out there so even if there were or even if there are fish out taking these pellets when I have fished here before you, you just wouldn't have guessed had you not been fishing it because they don't break the surface you know that like on some fishers you see them swirling for the pellets and that sort of thing when I've been here before that, that's just not been something that I've seen so just because you haven't seen any fish out there doesn't mean that there aren't any out there I'm just going to cut back a little bit now to four pellets at a time as you can see It'll just be really nice and frequent the good thing about fishing a method feeder like this is that you can literally just keep keep the catapult in your hand and just keep feeding well, that's five minutes so I had that one liner on this but I'm going to be quite quite active to start with I expect fish being up in the water so five minute casts feels about right to start with that was about three quarters of the way over to the um, to that aerator so this time I'm going to go a little bit further now I'm going to keep the same size feeder on it's just 20 gram into size I'll pull this further out now towards that aerator but again but again in line with uh, the loose fed pellet line. I'll sink that line in a moment, just on a few pellets. Just gonna keep fours going in for the time being, but really frequently. I don't feed too much, I've done that before on here. Where I've been really positive, so really confident, really confident that I was gonna catch on, on the pellet waggle and I, and I didn't. And then when I've gone on, on the bomb over the top of it, I just felt like there's just way too many pellets down there. For how many fish we were actually going to catch you know the target that day to win the section was about five fish and i fed felt like i'd fed way too much bait so the actual waggler setup the actual waggler setup is pretty much the same as what i always do and that is i've got the the horizon pro waggler 11 foot I've got that with a 3000 HX Pro reel, six pound, six pound mainline, and I'm just going to simply put on an eight mil pellet. They're basically the same pellet as what I'm actually loose feeding. I've got it set at about 18 inch, maybe 18 inches deep. That was a carp there, just turned. A couple of pegs to my right, and this is a six gram. I think it is because that's what I want or is it four gram four gram finesse waggler I think that might get me to where I want to be usually getting away with a lighter waggler as possible is better so I'm just going to kick off on that I can step it up to a six six gram or even a, an eight gram if I need, need to but I think this will be heavy enough to get there make sure that drag's undone bit of a breeze just caught that then so I may need I may need to step up to the six gram but 
We'll just persevere with this one to start with. Just about reaching that. I'm gonna have to whip it a little bit harder. Six gram will make it easier, but I don't want to cause too much disturbance when it goes in. Well, there is literally 90 minutes left and I've just hooked my first fish. Absolutely unbelievable. I just don't know why it's taking so long to hook one. It's not fishing brilliant around here to be fair anyway, but I've fed probably three pints of pellets now. So there's 90 minutes left. Jamie next to me has got two fish, but he's not caught for probably a, an hour and a half I think he may even be packing up I've just flogged and flogged and flogged this pellet waggler line I'm starting to see more fish cruising about and I've just seen two fish around my waggler and all day Jamie at the next peg has been saying you know it's going to be all about the last hour today but there's 90 minutes left so I'm obviously hoping now I can just get a few bites but I just can't believe see this is not even a, a big fish but it's just been nice to get one in the net and then just hammer it for this last period where hopefully the fish are going to get a bit more confident you know and have a, have a feed especially on this bagler I know mate my float moved Yeah, they got fed up of waiting for you to come back. <laughs> Jamie's packing up, he's had enough. It was great to see the boy. I've been messing about with the depth and everything. Well, there we go, we've got one. So finally. Oh, don't know if that hook's come out in the net. Let's get him in. Straight in there. So, oh, definitely playing catch up now. Yeah, the hook's just come out. So, I've still got plenty more bait to go through. And if Jamie is packing it, like he says, personally, I think that can only help me because he's been feeding pellets further out than me all day. And if he's suddenly going to stop feeding, and if it is going to be the best part of the day, that could really work in my favour. We'll click five pound for that one just to be safe, but unbelievable. I just can't, uh, I just can't believe how long it's taken. But that's why we keep going. The pellet waggler is all about being, uh, you know, working hard for every single bite. So that's how it's been. We've kept going and going. I've just seen another fish move just out there, right where my pellets are. Got a really good feeling that we're going to start getting a few bites now. I might be wrong, but there's definitely more fish moving around out there. Keep changing wagglers. Obviously, usually like the lightest one you can get away with, but obviously you've still got to be able to reach that range of where your feed is. I think Jamie's. I've got to admit, it looked much better feeding much further out like jamie has next to me he, he, you know he's, he's been a good probably 10 meters past me which i'm sure can only help especially when the fish are cagey but but even he's not well incredible just saying that you know just starting to see one or two fish move this is a good fish this one feels much heavier running for that he's come off oh. obviously I don't know if that was foul up there's been quite a few fish foul up today and I'm hoping that's not going to be my last chance I can check the time 
Yeah, we've got 90 minutes. And I've just, I'm sure I've just seen another fish move where my pellets are. I'm hoping that's not, has it broke me? It has, that's broke me that, which is not very good, is it? That's not very good. I'm just gonna take this opportunity to just put a bit of fresh line there, because that line looked a little bit damaged underneath the, underneath the rig there. But I didn't say to you at the beginning, this rig is basically, um, size 14 mx mxc3 size 14 to uh, 015 015 hook length which breaks at around five pound now there are obviously fish much heavier than that in here but five pound is it's as heavy as i've ever had to go on this setup um and these hook lengths are 20 centimeters so um I just, I don't, the thing with the line, you, you know, you may be able to get away with line thicker than 015 in diameter, but I just think when these fish are as cagey as what they are, you know, they can see everything. And so it's more of a, that bit of line's damaged there as well. That's obviously caught on something. I can feel it. I'm just not even going to take the chance. I'll cut that bit off, see how it's all curled up. It's obviously touch something and keep that bait going in. I'll do this. I'm gonna have to get some more pellets out of the box in a minute. Let me just tie another loop on that. I've got the six gram six gram finesse waggler on at the moment. That's what I've just had those two bites on. I was a bit annoyed that that hook lens broke me to be fair. As you could you could hear the drag going, couldn't you? So all that's been set and everything. So let's get this up length on and get back out there. I think um, the average number of fish I've heard for people have caught has been around four or five. I don't know what the best is. So you've just seen how quick those two bites were. You know, you can get four or five fish in as many casts if they switch on, and if they come onto that feed. I'm just using that banding tool to get that on. So there we go, ready to go again. I can't see any fish moving out there at the moment. Just gonna fire four, four pellets and then go over the top. Try and feather that float so it lands nice and soft. Jamie sounds like he is, he's packing up, so that can only help me. The angler on my right isn't feeding like this at all. He's not fishing a waggler, he's been fishing the pole down the margin. So he's not firing pellets out there. So the nearest angler to me that's feeding like this, or similar, is two, four pegs to my left, and possibly four pegs to my right. So that's surely got to give me an advantage to drawing some fish in with these pellets. You'd think so anyway. I've just had a stray cast to my left. There's just a bit of ripple on it now and the light isn't great for seeing this red top float, but now Jamie's gone. I've obviously got a bit more room now to my left. So I've decided to, to go a little bit further to the left now. I mean, the background's easier to see the float anyway, but it, it, that's where the space is. And I've just gone and picked one up. A little bit shallower now than what I was. I just shallowed it up a little bit. But I've just been playing around with that all day can't say that there's any sort of magic depth or anything. I can only only um, say that the reason why we've suddenly had three bites is, is possibly just the time of day. And possibly the fact that Jamie stopped firing pellets out there as well. Combination of the both, I think. Because the things that I've, that I've tried are things that I've tried dozens of times over the last three hours. Looks like a bigger fish, this one. Still on that six gram finesse waggler, as you can see. There we go, we've got him. That's a good fish. Bigger than the first one. Brilliant. He's got to be a good six or seven pound, I would say. Let's get that hook out. I didn't think he was going to flip on me then, like he did. Let's just get that hook out. 
14 looks about right to be fair. Let's get that one in the net and get some pellets back out there. A race against the clock now, isn't it? Thankfully it only took a minute, a minute and a half to land that. Get some pellets out there first. And get some fish back in the area. I'm going to explore that area as you can see off further to, to the left now. I'm going to try and utilise that, that space that I've got. You can see the depth that I'm fishing there, about 30 centimetres or so. Again, just with exactly the same pellet on that I'm feeding. This banding tool makes the process much easier. Just make sure it's in the middle. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna feed. I'm gonna go straight out there where, where I've just fed. That breeze has dropped now again, so that ripple's gone. But it has been coming and going all day. See that swirl there? That is where I've just hooked this fish. So I just mugged this one as it was passing. It was going past at about eight meters in front of me. So I just managed to underarm the waggler. Just feather it nicely, it landed lovely. And it's taken it. I'm assuming it's hooked right. And while I'm playing this, there is a fish out there actually virtually on my feed area as well. So yeah, you've got to take every opportunity you can get. Brilliant. First thing I want to do is, well, that was a mugged fish. But obviously I want to get some pellets out there for the next cast out there. So that was an opportunist. An opportunity fish that one. A good fish. Five or six, five or six pounds. If you fought like that out there, you might not have got caught. You might not have got landed. Well, just shows you doesn't it. I'm doing exactly the same as what I've been doing all day. Let's get back out there. There's a fish in front of me there. Which way is he going? That way. That's gone right in front of it. Go on, take it. Yes. Oh no! <laughs> it took it and I missed it. There was nothing there. Oh, how frustrating is that when you go out your way to, to do something slightly different and then you go and miss the bite. That's like putting a big fish line in and you, you're resting it and then all of a sudden you go on it, hook the big fish you've been after, and then you lose it. It's so frustrating. It's really hot now. Now that sun's broken through and there's no, uh, there isn't any wind. So much so, I've had to cover the other camera up because it's overheating. It keeps switching off. So I do apologise, but that's why you're watching currently just on the, on the chest cam. Hopefully it'll cool down, I can put it back on in a few minutes. Yes. It just felt perfect for a bite. Just seen a couple of fish, a couple of fish move around the area. It's really hot now, really, really warm. But this feels like it's the only method I'm gonna get a bite on really. But to be fair, it has felt like that for a couple of hours. But we've managed to find a few bites, get a few bites. I've no idea what else has been caught. I can't really hear anybody catching. Like I said earlier, most people, well not most people, but the kind of numbers of fish I were hearing were, were fours and fives. A couple of people have just caught a couple in the odd skimmer, but. This will, uh, hopefully, if we can get this one, this will put me on four. It's a shame I lost one, but...
come round. Swing your head round. There we go, we've got him. Bigger than what I originally thought. When I first looked it. Well, that's number four. In a very short space of time, with a good fish. Well, that's a bit more respectable now, isn't it? Four fish. Not sure how long's left. Let's have a quick look. 40, 43 minutes left. Plenty of time for a couple more. Can't believe how warm that sun is now. Hopefully that other camera's gonna have cooled down. Let's uh, see if it is. Right then, let's see if we can get another one. I'm getting greedy now. That went in nice. It's come off. I can't believe that. As soon as it hit the surface, it took it, it took the pellet. That was another fish gone. That was really annoying. Wow, it looked ideal. I said it, as soon as it went in, it just looked ideal. Swimming had a bit of a rest while we're playing that other fish. Oh, so potentially that's six fish we could have had. But I've only got four. 40 minutes left, come on. right in the middle of the feed well I've just repeated exactly the same thing put six pellets out there the other camera's gone again on the uh, it's overheating again so I'm switched off unfortunately so hope you don't mind the chest cam but it, I'd rather capture this footage than, uh, than no footage whatsoever so yeah so missed those two well bump one fish then I miss one Fired about six pellets out after two casts without any feed. I had a bite as soon as the pellet hit the surface. So just gotta make sure obviously I'm gonna land land everything that we hook now. You never know. What's been caught elsewhere you see, so the camera, the battery went on that one. So that's the biggest of the day. So Sorry if you didn't see me netting that one. I did land it. So I've just fired some pellets out there. And um, definitely struggling with the camera situation today, but there's literally about 20 minutes left, I think. So I'm just gonna keep on going. And it's definitely time for a couple more if the fish are gonna oblige. Let's have a cast without feeding. Let's see if we can just get one that might be there. Oh, that was a bite. I've got to get rid of that because that has died completely. Very poor day on the camera front today. So I do apologise, but I'll keep going. I'm trying to record what I can for you. Get back out there. Bit of cloud cover. A bit of cloud cover come now, which might help. There's about 13 minutes left, I've just checked, and I've just had two really fast bites, which I'm ashamed to say I missed both of them. Didn't feel anything. And when that's happened before, I've kind of hooked a fish just after it. It's as though it signals the arrival of a fish, and as you can see, I'm playing one now. So there's about, well, now there'll be 11, 12 minutes left, something like that. So uh, if we can land this one, that this will put us on six. The sun just went behind that cloud and um, it just felt so much better and that's when I've had the bites as you can probably tell looking at looking now that uh, the uh, the sun's come back out again now so this feels like it's one of those waddlers one of the bigger fish that just comes in 
in a straight line just shaking its head like that. <laughs> so hopefully that means it's going to oblige and end up in the net pretty quick. Yeah, he's good, isn't he? He's a good one. Let's get that hook out before he starts thrashing about. Get him in the net. Is that number six? Let's get back out there. Just gonna fire a few pellets first. Just to try and set another one up. Let's hope another one's gonna come through that feed area. I'm not hearing anything about how the rest of the match is fishing. I haven't heard anything for this last hour and a half. I'm not hearing anyone catching or, or anything. So I've no idea how my six fish is actually faring. I, I just haven't got a clue. And obviously we're talking about numbers as well. I know one or two of the anglers that I heard earlier caught four or five fish. I know that some of them had caught stockies. They were like little, you know, two, two pounders, three pounders. I haven't had any of those, so... Yeah. Oh. I think that's the end. <laughs> well, you've seen it, seen it first hand. There's not much I can really tell you um, that you don't already know. Um, ended up on, am I on six fish? I think I'm on six fish. And every one of those has come after Jamie went. So whether that was the reason why I suddenly caught, who knows? We'll never know. The only thing I think I can say is that, you know, it, it could have been time of day as well. But I think if if it had been time of day, I think other people would have been catching as well. Now, they may have caught, but I haven't seen anyone else catch. So I can't really blame it just on the time of day, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't only be... Uh, you know a case of just me catching would it you know you'd think a few fish would feed all the way around so I'll not know that until uh, until I speak to one or two of the lads but thankfully I've managed to get a session in with the pellet waggler and we've caught everything on the waggler which I'm over the moon about so uh, yeah the only thing I can say is that Jamie Wilde if you are watching this uh, I wish you'd packed up a lot sooner mate definitely <laughs>
52 pound dead Mafio Marshall. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, Fatih. Well done, Fatih. Well done, Second place with 57 pound five, Andy Taylor. Well done, Andy. And your winner with 62 pound dead. Jamie Wiles understudy Ian Grimshaw. <laughs> Hold on, mate.